a maiden's choice. The air crackled with tension as Maiden stood before Rocklin, her emerald eyes locked on his. The church basement, usually filled with the rhythmic thump of weights and the encouraging shouts of clients, was now silent, the only sound, the pounding of Maiden's heart. Rocklin, caught off guard by her sudden appearance, recovered quickly. A slow smile spread across his face, revealing a dimple in his cheek. Maiden, he drawled, his voice a smooth baritone. What brings you down to the basement today? Maiden ignored his attempt to deflect. I've heard the rumors, Rocklin, about the, uh, extracurricular activities you offer. Rocklin's smile faltered slightly, but he held her gaze. Rumors are just that, Maiden, whispers in the wind. Maiden stepped closer, her voice dropping to a low purr. Whispers suggest you're quite skilled in the art of, shall we say, pleasuring mature women. Rocklin's eyes darkened. He took a step forward, his tall frame towering over her. And what if I am? Maiden met his gaze, her lips curving into a provocative smile. Then I have a proposition for you. The next few weeks were a whirlwind of stolen glances, whispered conversations, and secret rendezvous. Under the cloak of darkness, Maiden found herself drawn into Rockland's world, a world of sensuality and forbidden desires. The massage he gave her was unlike anything she'd ever experienced a journey of discovery that awakened a dormant sensuality within her. But their clandestine affair couldn't remain hidden forever. One fateful night, they were discovered by none other than Deaconess Martha, Maiden's closest friend and confidant. The shock on Martha's face was quickly replaced by a calculating glint in her eyes. Martha, it turned out, had harbored a secret desire for Rocklin herself. She had suppressed it for months out of concern for what others in the church would think if they ever found out. Martha threatened to expose their affair unless he agreed to cater to her desires as well. Rocklin had no issues with Martha. He was a businessman with a peculiar gift for finding the beauty in mature women. Indeed, despite getting paid, he enjoyed every passionate moment with his massage clients and it may have been his obvious pleasure during the steamy sessions that prompted his clients to continue to dig deep into their purses and utilize his services. In other words, there was no need for Martha to threaten anyone, but because she did, it divided her and Maiden in the worst way, and despite not having any jealousy at all, Maiden forbade Rocklin from giving an erotic massage to Martha. This incensed Martha in the worst way, and after some time, she made do on her threat to expose the church's first lady. Martha made clandestine small talk with the church's most notorious gossipers and strict evangelicals. This was all it took. As the whispers grew louder and accusations escalated, the church community fractured. Deaconesses pointed fingers, elders muttered in hushed tones, and children exchanged confused glances. The once serene sanctuary was now a battleground of conflicting morals and shattered trust. Amidst the chaos, a chilling realization dawned upon Maiden. Rockland's freedom, or maybe even his life, was at stake. Unveiling a Darker Truth Church members in defense of Martha started researching Rockland's past and discovered that the town's police chief himself had a personal vendetta against Rockland. The chief, a man named Silas Thornton, had reason to harbor this deep-seated rage. Silas's wife, Blaine, was also one of Rockland's regular massage clients. Thornton, a man fueled by power and control, couldn't bear the thought of another man having even the slightest influence over his wife. He vowed to destroy Rockland, but needed a way to do so without raising suspicion. His opportunity arrived in the form of Miriam, a stunning and ambitious college student who occasionally attended the church. Miriam, aware of the power dynamics at play, was not above using her beauty to manipulate her way to the top. 
Thornton approached her with a proposition, seduce and expose the infidelity of the church's most prominent men, starting with the former pastor's husband. Miriam, lured by the promise of wealth and influence, readily agreed. Thornton, working in tandem with the former female pastor, set the stage for Miriam's entrapment. Using her charms and feigned piety, Miriam quickly gained the trust of the church's men, including the first man. She engaged in flirtatious conversations, offering suggestive smiles and lingering touches. The men, blinded by their desires and lulled into a false sense of security, fell prey to her seductive advances. Little did they know, their indiscretions were being documented by hidden cameras planted by Thornton and the former pastor. The evidence gathered would be used to publicly humiliate the men and discredit their reputations. But it backfired when the former lady pastor was shamed out of her position as church leader when one of the hidden cameras caught her stealing money from the church. In lieu of an embarrassing public trial and likely conviction, the former pastor simply resigned and disappeared. Rumors began to circulate about Rockland's alleged involvement in a missing person case, which was merely a ruse concocted by a jealous police chief eager to get revenge on Rocklin. He's a criminal girl. He is about as fine as God makes them, but he's nothing more than a low-life criminal. The stakes were now much, much higher. It was no longer just about denying Martha the greatest sex she would have in her life. It was about Maiden clearing the name of the man that was giving her the greatest intimate moments of her life. Fear gripped Maiden's heart. The man she loved was caught in a web of deceit, and she was determined to clear his name. Ignoring the disapproving stares and scathing whispers, Maiden embarked on a mission to uncover the truth. Her journey led her through dusty back alleys and dimly lit bars, where she met with informants and disillusioned church members, piecing together a puzzle of corruption and hidden agendas. The deeper she delved, the more she questioned everything she thought she knew about her faith, her community, and even herself. The scandal forced her to confront the hypocrisy that had festered within the church walls for years, where women were expected to conform and remain silent while male transgressions were swept under the rug. Fueled by a righteous anger and a fierce love for Rocklin, Maiden refused to be silenced. She used her newfound voice to advocate for justice, not just for Rocklin, but for all the women who had been silenced, marginalized, and ignored. Her unwavering spirit inspired other women to speak their truths, to challenge the status quo, and to demand equality. As Maiden's private investigation unfolded, the truth was finally revealed. The missing person was none other than Miriam, the college student that helped the police chief and the former pastor take down the church's principles. She was now living in another state and not missing at all. This revelation sent shockwaves through the community, forcing them to grapple with their own complicity in the web of deceit. The church, once a symbol of faith and community, was now viewed with suspicion and doubt as it became clear that church brass had colluded with the police chief. Ironically, from the ashes of scandal, a new hope emerged. Women, empowered by Maiden's courage, rose up to demand change. They rejected the suffocating expectations of the past and embraced their individuality. They pursued their dreams, their desires, and their right to happiness, regardless of societal constraints. The story of Maiden and Rocklin transcended the walls of the church, becoming a beacon of hope for countless women. It served as a reminder that even in the face of adversity and injustice, the human spirit can overcome. It was a testament to the power of personal agency, the courage to speak truth to power, and the unwavering pursuit of justice and equality. And so, as the church community rebuilt itself, it did so with a newfound understanding and appreciation for the strength and resilience of women. The scandal, though painful, had served as a catalyst for positive change, reminding everyone that true happiness lies in embracing our individuality and fighting for what we believe in. 
even when it means challenging the status quo. Thank you for listening to this original story. Please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel. And before you go, answer some of these questions. Number one, was Maiden justified in getting an erotic massage that she knew would likely end in sex, or should she have simply continued to starve for intimacy in a marriage with a husband with non-existent libido and no interest in her sexually? Number two, is it okay to remain in a relationship with someone you love, but find ways to occasionally get the things you may need from other people? Number three, do you think Rockland should continue his massage business? Number four, should Chief Thornton remain the top cop in the town? Number five, what do you think about Miriam's character? Number six, do older women have a right to sexual pleasure and expression? Number seven, how would you have reacted if you were a member of the church community and learned about the scandal? Number eight, what messages do you think the author, Hendo Rivera, ultimately conveys in the story, even if not intentional?